Hey guys, Reaganite 71 here. Back with you today. I got a ton of tomatoes, and they're all heirloom. I've got better boys in the little box there, and then I've got a lot of Rutgers. I'm going to take some of my very best tomatoes. These are all heirloom seeds, and I'm going to actually save the seeds today and show you how I'm going to do it. It's a pretty simple process. just takes a few days, and I'll be good to go for next year and have plenty of seeds that way. Okay, since I'm saving two varieties, Better Boy and Rutgers, I've got two half-pint jars here to save the seeds in. I'm just going to cut it right down the middle, like so. Now this one I've cut in half, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thumb and I'm just going to roll the seeds out of each little pocket right into the jar here. And we'll be left with a lot of good meaty tomato that we can use in sauce. You know, it's amazing. This tomato and its mother plant a few months ago was just like this little seed here. And these little seeds are going to be just like <laughs> this plant next year. That's an amazing, wonderful thing. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to add water to the jar here. And what's going to happen is over the next five days, this is going to ferment. It's going to develop a uh, white moldy layer on top, which is a good thing. All of our viable seeds are going to uh, sink to the bottom and the stuff on top we're going to skim off and I'll show you that here in a minute when we progress five days. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a coffee filter and put over this and rubber band it and then we're going to set it off to the side. This will keep uh, dust, bugs, things like that out of the way. And I'm going to write on here, this is a better boy and the date and I'm going to set it off to the side and we'll come back to it in five days. I'm going to use this same procedure for all of my other tomatoes but this is how we're going to do it right here. Now I'm going to take the seeds and set them up in an out of the way place and I've marked my calendar also so that I'll know to come back in five days and deal with them. Now I will say this over the five day period it is going to smell so having that covered like that is going to help a lot but when you open it up it's going to stink because it's rotting it's fermenting uh, but it's a part of the process and it's a temporary uh, problem I may actually have to move it outside I hope not but if it stinks too bad then I'll do that but uh, it's just something you got to deal with to get through in order to get your seeds for next year when you use heirloom seeds you're going to be able to do this year after year after year and save so much money. And if you go to Walmart with the big tomatoes, you're looking at a bucket tomato. So for every seed you save, you're going to get 20 pounds of tomatoes. That's a lot of money that you can grow. They say money doesn't grow on trees, but it can definitely grow on your tomato vine. Put our seeds away. And I got to tell you, they're not stinking at all like I thought they would. The coffee filter must have really uh, held it up, plus putting it up high in the kitchen. Never smelled it once during the five days, so that's a good thing. Now, maybe a different story when I open it up. Got a coffee filter laying on a clean plate here, uh, ready to receive the seeds. We're going to take this and, and work it, and then we're going to use the sieve, and I'll show you how to do that now. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is take the little cap we made off. You can see up top there's a uh, a moldy layer and this is very good all of the viable seeds have gone to the bottom now some of them are stuck and you can see they're wanting to sink here and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna kinda give that a little shake there let the seeds that want to go to the bottom go to the bottom seeds that continue to float are not seeds you would want anyway and then I'm just gonna scoop some of this top stuff off. I'm going to let this sit now, now that I've agitated it for about a minute. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this top layer off here. And 
and I'm going to stop short and then I'm going to just add cold water to the jar. Allow all that stuff to mix up. Get some of it off here like this. You can either continue to do that and just let it sit and keep adding water and getting that top layer off like that by let it out. You might lose some seeds that way. Or you can bring in a sieve or screen, a fine mesh screen, and just pour everything in and then wash them all out. The thing that you'll run into there is if you have some bad seeds, you're not able to, uh, to detect them and just let them, let them come off the top that way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pour this entire thing, add a little bit of water to the jar, make sure we've got all of our seeds out. Now I'm just going to run cold water for our seeds here. I'm going very gently as I as I work these seeds. I'm just gently kind of sliding them out of the way and letting that pulp work its way through. I don't want to grind these seeds and damage them. But we do want to get the pulp out. And that's what we're doing here. Now that I've got the seeds separated from the pulp, I'm going to let this sit for just a moment. Kind of let it air out just a tad. Alright, so now we'll just take this and dump them out on the paper towel. There we go. Now we're just going to spread these out on here. We're going to need about five days to let these dry out thoroughly. I'm going to put this on top of the refrigerator for about five, between anywhere between five and seven days uh, and that'll allow it to dry out. Once that's done, I'll take all of the seeds, get them off into a, uh, an envelope, seal it up, write what they are, write the date, and then you can pop it in the refrigerator and you can save seeds and they're good for between two and three years. But uh, that's pretty much it when it comes to saving seeds. Now, one thing that you can do is if you have a cookie cooling rack like this one, you could actually use it. It's used for cakes and cookies, you know, to let them cool off after you get them out of the oven. But you can take your filter, you know, that's kind of moist after all the wet seeds are on it, slide it off onto it nice and gently like this. And what's going to happen is it's going to allow air to get underneath it, on top of it, we actually have a ceiling fan in our kitchen and so it should dry it out in short order and should work pretty good that way. Well here they are after an hour of drying under our ceiling fan on the cookie rack and they look pretty doggone good. Everything's nice and dry and no more moisture and now they're just going to go up on top of the fridge. Folks, this is Reagan 71 Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this helpful. I really appreciate it when you watch and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.